if you've decided it's time to hire a financial advisor and you're just not sure how to go about it, if you're wondering where do I find someone who's who I consider qualified or somebody who can work with me, this is the video for you because today we're going to talk to Janice Kakowski. Janice is the founder of Century Financial Advisors. Janice's locator firm is located just east of Cleveland, Ohio. Janice specializes in financial planning for people who are in pre-retirement or young professionals. Today, we're going to ask Janice to use some of her 20 years experience to help us, to help you determine how to find, how to really interview a financial advisor. That's all up next right here on Over 50 TV. <music> Janice, welcome to Over 50 TV. Hi, Lou. Thanks for having me. What do you do? What questions do you ask a financial advisor? Can you, can you help us with that? I sure can. And it's an important subject to talk about. You don't want to find one out of the phone book, if you will, right? <laughs> no, exactly. Right. So um, when I'm talking to people and even people that interview me, I will give them questions to go out and look and talk with other advisors because I want people to find a fit for them. Um, one of the questions that I want people to ask advisors and ask me, what are your qualifications? What are your credentials? Mm -hmm. There are so many different letters that can be put after a financial advisor's last name. And it's confusing. It's like alphabet yeah. soup. And I think people need to really understand what are those letters that are after the person's name that they're talking with? And what does that mean? So let's just say, for example, that you're out, you're looking for somebody to help you do a holistic financial plan and manage some assets for you. And you go to interview Joe Smith and Joe Smith after his last name says CLU. He's a chartered life underwriter. He's an insurance salesman. So it, what do you expect from that person when you go meet with them is most likely they're going to try to sell insurance to you because that's what they do, it's what their expertise is. So it's really just understanding what are their qualifications, what are their credentials, and is that the right person to work with you? Yes. So qualifications, I mean, I don't know what those letters mean and I don't know what's important. What letters or, or acronym or whatever you want to call it, what should a certified financial planner have? What kind of credentials? Yeah. Well, a certified financial planner is, go is a certified financial planner. They have gone through rigorous courses and testing similar to the bar exam where they have to take a holistic uh, exam over all sorts of financial things. So any certified financial planner has to carry the CFP letters after their name. So that's mm -hmm. one of the credentials that they will have. And of course, that's you know where I'm gonna point people. If I'm not the right person, go find another CFP because number one, they are um, required to act as a fiduciary on your behalf, which means that they need to act in your best interest, not in what's gonna line my pocket the most, but what is in my client's best interest. Mm -hmm. And they also have the background and the they have at least passed an exam at some point in their career and have to take about 40 hours of continuing education every year, every two years to make sure that they're constantly continuing to educate themselves because this is such a changing environment. And for consumers, the people that are listening today, if you're looking for a certified financial planner, there is a website, the cfp.net website that you can go to and you can find a planner. There's a find a planner website. And the one thing I want to mention is the financial planning industry. Anybody can call themselves a financial planner. They can't call themselves a certified financial planner unless they've passed that CFP exam, but anybody can call themselves a financial planner. So it really is an industry where there, you know, there can be a lot of confusion. Somebody could go to a community college. They can get an education in history and they can come out and they can go sit for their state and study for their state like series licenses or whatever. And they can call themselves sure. a financial planner, yeah. but they don't necessarily have the rigorous background that certified financial planners do, which is why that's one of the first questions I tell people to ask. What's your background? What's your qualification? What are your credentials? Yeah. And I think those are great questions. What are some of the other questions that you want to ask? I know for me, if I'm sitting down with a financial planner, I want to make sure that we kind of have some agreement in philosophy in terms mm -hmm. of uh, investing or in terms of debt? Yeah, I think that's a great uh, lead into the next question I was thinking about is what is your approach? Mm -hmm. If you're asking an advisor, what is your approach to investment management? Yeah. What is your approach to financial planning? Again, depending on what the consumer is looking for, and maybe they're looking for both. 
But if they're looking specifically for investment management, asking that advisor, what is your approach to investment management? Is that advisor out looking for individual stocks to pick? Is that what they're doing all day is researching companies and finding mm-hmm. out that today Nike's the best one to purchase, tomorrow we'll purchase Under Armour. And they're, are they choosing that or are they finding mutual fund managers that will um, do that job for them and they're putting portfolios together of mutual funds? Mm-hmm. As far as financial planning, what is their approach to financial planning? Maybe that advisor doesn't even do comprehensive financial planning and really they only focus on investment management. Yeah. And if you as a consumer want a good financial planner, which who's going to make sure that you're uh, covered appropriately insurance wise, make sure that there's some, if there's any tax advantageous opportunities for you that you're taking advantage of those, mm-hmm. um, making sure that if that you're aligned appropriately as far as your assets are titled so that they flow appropriately when you pass away. That's a big deal. And you want to make sure it's done right. Those are the types of things that are going to be looked at through a holistic financial plan. And you need to find out from that advisor, what is your approach? Do you do these things? Is that how you handle it? Like if I'm going to hire a financial advisor, I want to make sure that this is a person that can give me the attention I want. Is there a number that uh, I should be asking a, a, a CFP Do you have 10 clients? Do you have 100? I mean, I want to make sure they don't have so many people that they can't give me the attention that I need. Right. And I think asking the number of clients is it 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 depends on what that person is doing. Can they handle 80 clients? Can they handle handle 800 clients? What does their Mm -hmm. staff look like? I think asking that number is not going to be helpful. I think it's more asking, how do you work with your clients? Um, what type of services, if I retain you, what type of services are you going to give to me? And if I retain you, how often are we going to be meeting? What can I expect from communication from you? I think it's those sort of questions more than how many clients do you have? What is your philosophy when it comes to, because you're also going to be interviewing that client as well. They're interviewing you, but you want to make sure yourself, Janice, you want to make sure that if that client's right for you, what do you look for? Right. I look for a client who's a fit for me personally is my main focus is financial planning. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to put together a comprehensive plan for that client. Without that, I don't feel that I can give give good advice on their investment, their investment approach, or um, how do they reach their goals without knowing that whole person financially. Um, So I'm looking for somebody who really wants that. So last question, I guess this would be the last question for you. Look, probably have a dozen more, but how does a financial advisor, how are they paid? And that was going to be a question I wanted to make sure we (laughs) talked about today. And that is, so that's the question that needs to be asked by the potential client. Advisor, how do I pay you? Because a lot of us get paid in different fashions. Some advisors will say, well, I don't charge a fee, but they're getting money by commission. So uh, the mutual funds that they put you into, or if they're selling products like insurances or annuities or things like that, they're getting paid by commission for selling those products or putting you into those specific funds. Some of us, I'm a fee-only advisor, I charge a fee. So for financial planning, I charge a fee that ranges between $1,500 and $5,000, depending on the complexity of the client's situation, to put together that financial plan. If my client has assets to manage, then there's a separate fee to manage those assets as well. But it's a fee only, and the clients know up front exactly what I'm going to make for the services I'm providing to them. There's some that have a mix of both of those. Maybe I charge a fee, maybe I get commissions, but you need to ask that question. How do you get paid? And then how do I pay you? Do I write you a check? Does money come out of the account that you're managing for me to pay your fees? Do you get commissions? How does this happen? Because you, you really need to know. Yeah, I agree with you. And one of the one of the stories that I heard is that uh, you have a financial advisor who gets paid by percentage. Um, if they're not um, scrupulous, which is the only word I can think of right now to use, if they're not scrupulous, they may be going and putting me into funds or into a stack that is going to benefit them more than it would benefit me because they're going to get higher fees. Janice, can you think of any other questions that, that I haven't covered that we haven't covered so far? Yeah, there's one big one. One big one. So one of the questions that the Certified Financial Planning Board of Standards tells consumers to ask advisors is, have you had any complaints filed against you or have you been disciplined for any unlawful action? 
if somebody has, they're probably not going to answer that question honestly, right? Hmm. So right. there's a website called brokercheck.com. That's www.brokercheck.com. Before any consumer even talks to an advisor, even places a phone call to, to schedule a meeting, get on there and look. Because on that brokercheck.com, you can find the name of the advisor and you can see if there's been any disclosures, meaning has there been any complaints filed against them? Have there been any uh, disciplinary actions taken against that advisor? If there have, read them. And are you, is this something that, oh, one person complained? Things like that may happen. We know that. But if there's yeah. five or six complaints against this advisor, do you really want to talk to them? So that's a big one is to make sure that that brokercheck.com is a big deal. Check into your advisor. Make sure that there's no red flags. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up. But well, Janice, I want to thank you once again uh, for, for being with us today. I mean, I think you've really answered all the questions that I can think of and questions that have been that are important to me, and I'm sure they're important to their to our to our viewers. So I want to thank you once again, and I will surely, certainly see you again. You're welcome. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, yeah, yeah.